Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've been watching my buddy Gussie fish the last two days in the Bassmaster Classic and he's absolutely destroying the big smallmouth using a technique that some people refer to as a Demiki rig, some people refer to as mopping or moping, I've heard some people call it scrubbing, lots of different terms for this, but it's basically where you use a 90 degree jig head with a straight tail minnow type imitation bait and you're vertical fishing this under the boat but keeping it suspended, getting the fish to come up to it and eat it. Very, very good cold water technique. It's a very good presentation year round. It just seems like most people prefer to use it during the cold water periods, but it's a really good technique and we wanna talk about it a little bit today because it's gonna win the Bassmasters Classic. I'm predicting it. I think Gussie's gonna run away with it. I think he's gonna catch five more over 18 inch smallmouth and therefore he's going to be good to go he probably will win it by a lot because of the fact that he is committed to catching over 18 inch smallmouth which is the limit for the lakes that they're fishing and as far as i know nobody else has been able to make it work in fact this has been such a dominating technique on teleco and fort loudon lakes for gussie that couple of years ago when he was there, roughly the same time period, he won that one by a landslide, led all four days. He's led the first two days of the Bassmasters Classic going on right now. So the six days he's been there, he's been able to catch six days of five legal sized, which are over 18 inch smallmouth, and he's led by a landslide. He's caught everything on this technique. Simply the Jig head with a minnow imitating bait. It's not that easy though. So I want to break this down before I do get into the specific details regarding the tackle, the bait, how to fish it. I want to point out guys that if you're looking for a little bit of late, uh, help on your local lakes, check out the lake breakdowns that I do at fishthemoment.com. I'll put the link in the video description. Also, if you want to support the channel, guys, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. If you're looking to pick up some of this Demiki rigging gear, to go use on your local lakes, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link, which I'll put in the video description as well. All right, so let's talk about the bait in itself. Now there's two main key parts to a, we're gonna call it the Demiki rig here, to a Demiki rig. The first is you need a relatively heavy jig head that has a 90 degree line tie. The 90 degree line tie is the important part because you're fishing this bait vertical. With a 90 degree line tie, your bait will sit horizontal in the water column, just like this. If you go with a 60 or a 30 degree, it'll sit more uh, diagonal in the water to even vertical. And that's not what you want at all. You want your bait to sit perfectly still, horizontal in the water column. So you wanna use a 90 degree line tie. Uh, Gussie, I believe, is throwing the Smeltinator, which is made by Lake of the Woods. Uh, this is the uh, Guppy Head. There's a lot of good ones out there. You can throw a ball head, but it needs to be a 90 degree. That's the key part to this. Once you've got that, you want to look at your bait choice. Now, if you look at the baits that he's using or people traditionally use when fishing a Demiki rig, you're talking a straight tail shad style bait. So in this case, one of the ones I like to use is a Fluke Junior right here. The Kitek Shad Impact, straight tailed minnow. The uh, Demiki Armor Shad. You can tell here these are all basically a uh, soft jerk bait style bait that does not have any sort of major motion other than a little bit of movement potentially in the tail as your bait suspends there. But you don't wanna throw a boot tail. You don't wanna throw a curly tail because the key to this is not moving your bait. You're almost making the bait so tantalizing because there is no motion to it. So if you're using a good straight tail minnow imitating bait, and generally speaking, I think your best bet is to try to match the forage that those, the size of the forage that the fish are feeding on. And what I mean by that is in the springtime, if you're fishing around threadfin shad, a smaller three inch profile bait, potentially like the armor shad is a lot of times a better one to go with. 
If the fish are feeding on, say, smelt or alewife or cisco, which happens a lot in my neck of the woods, then I like to go with it something that is a little bit longer, like a four inch style bait. It seems to generate better quality strikes, but at the same time, because your bait's not moving much, the fish get a great look at it, and therefore you really do wanna to try to match the hatch or match the size of the forage that you're fishing. So once you've got your bait down, in terms of the tackle that you're gonna be using this on, most people are gonna fish it on spinning gear. That's generally how I prefer to fish it. But with a lot of times, you're gonna be fishing this bait down to 30, 40, even 50 feet of water. You can, you, you're gonna be using heavier heads. And I guess I should have addressed that. I like to fish a heavier head. Generally speaking, I don't go any lighter than a quarter ounce. I like to throw up to a 3 8 ounce, even sometimes a half ounce head. The reason for that, again, is you want to keep this bait suspended vertically under the boat. So if you've got some wind, you've got some current, you need a heavier head to keep the bait pretty much vertical under the boat. The other thing is because you are dropping this down into relatively deep water, a lot of times you want to get your bait down there faster and therefore a heavier head allows you to do that. And there's really no reason to be throwing an eighth or a 3 16 ounce head because that's so much lighter and it's just harder to keep that bait completely vertical under the boat. You're going to be using your electronics a lot of times to see if fish are hanging around. I know Gussie in this case is using uh, his forward facing units, but keep in mind, it's not a technique you have to have that. The first time he won, he was using just his 2D sonar. Because you're fishing directly under the boat, 2D sonar, sonar is really all you need to actually make this work. You don't even need it. You just uh, it, you can benefit from determining how deep you are so that you can raise and lower your bait based on the depth. So you need to have some sonar, at least 2D. But I like a heavier head because it allows me to keep my bait vertical under the boat uh, without giving it much attention or much thought. It just seems to suspend much better. From So from a tackle standpoint, I generally like to fish on spinning gear, uh, eight pound test, uh, fluorocarbon uh, as a leader to a 10 pound uh, mainline braided line. But I will sometimes switch over to bait casting gear because again, I'm not doing anything but letting it suspend. So it's not uncommon for me to switch completely over to a, a, a lighter, medium, heavy, seven foot bait casting rod with 10 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon, just to use that if I'm fishing for better quality fish or slightly off colored water where I don't feel like I need to drop down in line size that much. So you can get away with both spinning and bait casting gear. And then the, the other main aspect to this, which I've addressed, is the fishing standpoint. From a technique or, a, or an actual uh, fishing method, I can't stress it enough. You don't want to impart action. Even if you know there are fish around, the, the steadier you can keep your bait, generally the better. Meaning if you're rising up and down with waves, your bait is going like this. I'll even go to the point where I'm trying to raise and lower my rod tip to keep my bait from moving as the boat rocks up and down. It's that critical to keep your bait from moving. So what I'll do is I'll try to get over a piece of structure. Maybe you've got a, a boulder or a ditch or some, sign of, some sort of rock transition. Say it's in 30 feet of water. Generally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down to about, uh, I'll say 27-ish foot and I'll keep it on the bottom to see if I have any sort of activity. Generally speaking, the fish are going to come right for it if they see it there. If they come slowly towards it, a lot of times they're not going to eat it. When that happens, what I'll generally do is slowly rise my bait to see if that draws their interest back in. That's something a lot of ice fishermen know is you can slowly rise your bait, which will get the fish to come back and actually commit to it versus just keeping it steady without moving it. But I will not start rising it until the fish have made a pass on it. Meaning I know they've come up to it because I can see it either on my forward facing or I can see it on my 2D, but they did not eat it. If they didn't eat it, I know they've come up and looked at it. At that point, I'll slowly start rising it in the water column. A lot of times that will bring the fish back to the bait and they'll commit to it because they think it's starting to move away. 
But don't, in my opinion, you don't want to try to twitch it or pop it if they don't bite it. You just want to slowly move it, move it away from them. And a lot of times that'll get them to commit. <clears throat> from a location standpoint, it is a deep water technique. It is a technique that I think you're going to be looking for long, flat, tapering main lake points. You're going to be looking for the base of points, humps, uh, saddles, uh, standing timber. A lot of times it can be good. Any place that the fish are kind of suspending a lot of times to move in, into their spring area. So they're moving from a wintering location to a pre-spawn phase. Those transition routes are going to be some of your key places. So a lot of times you're talking about right off of a main channel or right off of a main, main creek. You're talking about uh, bluff walls a lot of times, bluff points. Your, you know, like I said, your points, your humps, your saddles. Those are all key places to give this technique a try. And I want to stress too, you can fish this in shallower water. I think a lot of team, a lot of times people refer to this as a bait for 20 feet of water or less. But depending on your water clarity as well as how deep the fish are, you can fish this effectively in 10 to 14 feet of water as well. If the fish are willing to be under your boat, you can still fish it in an effective manner. A lot of times though, you don't get the fish to feel all that comfortable directly under your boat until you're in like that 20 foot range or deeper. But this is a killer technique. It is still one that a lot of people are not using. I think there's a lot of Northern folk that have been fishing it for smallmouth for quite some time, which is one of the reasons I think Gussie is so good at this. Uh, and I think there's a lot of, of other individuals that have been really doing it effectively for spotted bass and Southern smallmouth, but it's not just a smallmouth or spotted bass technique. It works so good for all bass species. It is a truly effective method that I think a lot of us need to try and work into our arsenal. So I'm gonna le leave you with this. Guys, you need to get your Demiki rig stuff. I'll put the links for all these in the video description. I'm gonna get back to watching some live footage and my buddy Gussie win the Bassmasters Classic. Go Gussie! Thanks for watching guys. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned for another video coming out tomorrow.